Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the how to install a drip irrigation system part three. Uh, part one, I went over the pieces and parts that you would use uh, in a system. And then in part two, I laid out some drip irrigation in this vegetable garden. Uh, one thing I failed to mention in that video is the reason I laid these three tubes across the top here and uh, they're not buried. Uh, and I used the, the reason I use this particular style was because at the end of this season, I'll be able to take these three pipes running on each side here and just roll them back, uh, take the pins out and just roll them back, pull out my vegetable plants, put new compost down, run the tiller through it if I want to. And then after I smooth it back out, after I do whatever planting I'm gonna do, just roll those three lines right back out and uh, put them right back in place and I'm good to go again, uh, irrigating. Today I'm gonna expand this system into a few different directions. I'm gonna add some shutoffs because some of the shrubs aren't gonna need water all that often, uh, certainly not as often as this raised vegetable garden with. So let's get to work on that. One of the main things I want you to get from this series of videos is just how flexible this type of irrigation is. Currently, I have the connection for the water hose and a timer on that other end. Ultimately, my main water line and my main water valve, I'm gonna put right about here because my supply is coming from that direction. And at that time, I'll take this little end I put on here off and have this be the connection to the main line. And then on the other end, I'll shut that side off. So, you know, there's no mistakes on this type of system. If you make a mistake, you plug a hole, you make another cut, you put a different type of piece in, you can reverse the water flow, everything, so on and so forth. There's just no, you're not fixed on anything permanent on this at all. And if you're overwatering something, you just change out a nozzle, change out the type of, uh, uh, you know, the way in which you're watering or put a shut off in, all kinds of things. So just the flexibility of it is amazing. Okay, right here I have some perennials that are pretty densely planted and they're gonna need quite a bit of water because they're gonna be competing with one another uh, for water all summer, uh, about the same amount of water as this vegetable garden will need. Uh, this piece up in here is going to be uh, perennials, but it may be a few weeks before I get to that job. So I'm actually gonna use the black tubing uh, through here in three lines that will be replaced with drip at the time I plant the new perennials. And then we'll run that same drip tubing that we ran through the vegetable garden down there. Uh, when I plant these, I'll just replace the black strips in here with the red uh, drip pipe that has the emitters every six inches. And then I'll use the black pieces for something else, you know, the solid pipe. Uh, no problem at all, nothing goes to waste in a system like this. On this other end over here, we're going to run a piece of drip tubing around each of these blueberry plants. And I'll show you how I go about twisting it around each of those. And we're gonna connect it into the line right here. I'm gonna put a shut off on it because those blueberries definitely will not need as much water as these other things. And then at the same time, I'm gonna run a piece this direction, again, with a shut off right there to water these shrubs that I've put across this wooded space right here. And we'll have a solid pipe going across here that won't have any emitters in it but I'm gonna be planting a lot, of, a lot of things out in this area. So we'll anytime be able to cut into that pipe and, and uh, feed additional uh, water out into this space. Where I had put this little figure eight stopper on the end right here, I need a little bit more pipe going this way. So I'll simply remove that. I'll put this coupler that slides into the inside right here and into the inside right here. And I'll move my figure eight a little further out. I need about three feet of additional pipe so I can run this so I can run this tubing right through here. So I extended that pipe and I buried it under the mulch. The end is there. This is actually the spot, like I say, where I'm gonna connect my main line in when I automate this system. I ran the three uh, black lines across the ground here, which I'll eventually convert to the red or brown drip lines in the future. And then on the back of the, each of these rows, I ran the red uh, drip line that uh, has the emitters every six inches. Uh, one thing to keep in mind when you're doing irrigation of any kind, water runs downhill. So this is sloped uh, this way, okay? So I ran my row of drippers behind this row, behind this row, and behind this row. I won't need anything on the other side because the water is actually all gonna run that way anyway. So on this end of the system that currently is where we're hooking the water hose up, I need to extend this out a little further. So again, I'm gonna cut that line, put in a coupler, uh, put in a little more brown pipe that doesn't have the holes in it. I'm gonna put a T in right about here so that we can run a line up to here and then we'll run drip tube around all those plants. 
I'll put another T in right about here so that we can coil uh, this tubing around each of these plants. This is the 17 millimeter tubing that has the drip emitters in it uh, every 18 inches or so. Here's a drip emitter right here built into it, those little holes. They're about every 18 inches apart. When I use this material, I'll wrap it around each individual shrub or tree, just one loop, right about the drip line of the plant. Uh, it comes in the coil, and I'll straighten the coil out some, but then I'll use the coil to my advantage uh, to uh, flip, um, see how it's coiled up right there? I just use that to my advantage to coil it around, and then I'll coil it around that one and that one and that one. And rather than put an end on it over there, I think I'm just gonna put it right back into the main line, so this will just be one continuous loop. So let me show you what I did on this end. Uh, the clock was right about here. I cut in there and put a coupler in to extend this pipe. And this is just that solid 17 millimeter pipe. Put it back in here. I put a T in right here and a shutoff right there. You can buy these shutoffs for the 17 millimeter pipe and that will allow me to turn these blueberries off uh, at times when they don't need water. And then I ran it to right here, okay? And rather than using one of those figure eights, I actually just put this system in a circle. So there's a T here. That pipe runs this way and around and around and around. And it comes back up through these three plants and just connects right back into the main line. So this is effectively in a circle. It doesn't have a dead end on it. That should work great. Now, this the water hose is temporary here so I can show you how this thing is running. I wanna show you that I did some of these the correct way and some of them the wrong way. This slopes down toward me. So on this upper part right here, I wrap the loops the, just the way you're supposed to do it or the way I would recommend you do it. Uh, the pieces are up here above. There's drippers in here too. They're every 18 inches apart. And so that water is gonna migrate toward where I'm standing, okay? On this lower half right here, I did this on purpose so that I could show it to you. Uh, the water that's coming into this part, in this part of the pipe right here, I should have had it above the plants right there. If you can get the twist correct, sometimes it's difficult. But this water right here is just gonna end up wasted, really. I'd, like I said, I'd rather have it up above them, okay? All right, and that's just a closed loop around these blueberries. I'm gonna bury this in this mulch a little bit. I just use the back of my uh, pickmatic, the little pick part, the skinny part, and just make a little skinny trench in there and uh, barely cover it. Doesn't need to be covered very much. I just don't wanna have to look at it all the time. Okay, then I put another T in here, a shut off there. Uh, these shutoffs work super, super easy right here. And it has a little arrow on it. It's off right now uh, if it's in line like that. It's on. This is just a solid line that runs up through here. This ivy's got to go and uh, then connects uh, somewhere where, somewhere right in here, there's a, a coupler. I don't know where the heck that coupler is. Oh, the coupler's right there after, right there. Okay, I wrap this around these deciduous azaleas and again, the pipe is running on the high side of them. Okay, it's running on the high side on every single one of these plants as I came around here. I'm not gonna be burying this because this hasn't even been mulched over here yet. But there's that red bud. Again, it's going on the high side around this viburnum. Again, it's on the high side around that Cree viburnum. And then over to this dogwood and I've dead ended it there for now. I've got some azaleas and some other things to add here as I go, but this is as far as I'm gonna go in this video. In the next video, I'm going to be doing some containers and baskets on my front porch. And then after that, we'll work on getting the system integrated into my uh, automated irrigation system. I laid this timer on the ground three or four days ago when I shot that second video. And in that amount of time, ants uh, built a nest inside of it. Uh, and it's still working. This clock is so industrial, but I put it on auto here and then I'm hitting manual. So I have the water on. It takes just a minute for that to, uh, uh, to come on and get started there. And uh, here it comes, and we'll take a look at where this water's coming out. Uh, it'll take a second to fill up these lines, but these are, like I say, every 18 inches apart right there. Now you can see it starting to uh, drip out. I hope you can see that. Yeah, there it is right there. And there's one a little bit further up. You can see it right there. That's perfect. Uh, I don't need to water these very often, so that shut off right there will come in handy. Again, we've got them here. We've got the drippers in the pots right there. We've got the quarter inch line. We put in the solid black line here until we actually need to irrigate it. 
and uh, over here. Let's see, make sure these are running. They are very, very well. And again, they're on the high side of these rows right here. And let's walk up here to the top and make sure that everything's working up here at the top as well. Okay, and this viburnum is in fact getting water right there. And these are, this is that 17 millimeter pipe with the uh, emitters every 18 inches apart. And that usually works great for shrubs. Thank you very much for watching this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to uh, get the follow-up videos. Thank you.